Alvin, if it's okay with Guy and Rosella, uh, we'll start with consult to c um, consult to c is uh, represented by Thorsten Seeger, who is behind me, and uh, his director and founder of consult to c as I already said, is a business coaching and team development company. Uh, Mr. Seeger is an engineer and manager who has 13 years of leadership experience in manufacturing, equality, management and project management with uh, the German multinational company SGL Group. Before this, uh, he worked um, for six years in R&D with the Max Planck Society, really well renowned, and Nobel Prize uh, laureate Harry Croto, which is really interesting. Uh, he became facilitator for Systemic Constellation in 2015 and decided to develop this business in, in this business, sorry, in Vietnam and other countries in Southeast Asia. His clients vary from international companies to educated locals and also foreigners, of course. Um, my first question, Thorsten, I don't know, can you hear me properly? Yes? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Fine. Uh, my first question to you is what led you to be to do business in Vietnam? Well, um, it had something to do. I had uh, connections to Asia because I was working for SGL in uh, Malaysia before. Uh, so um, I developed uh, contacts in Vietnam from there. I liked the country a lot when I went there for the first time. And, uh, and I met lots of interesting and very open and very educated people here, particularly here in the city. And uh, so... Um, after my return from, uh, from Malaysia, from my expert assignment uh, for SDL Group, um, I basically learned how, or during that time, that was 2015, roughly, when I became a facilitator. For mm -hmm. So this is when I learned uh, how this can be applied for business. And uh, in, the, in the, the run of the next one and a half years, uh, I found out that this work is basically unknown in Vietnam. Although Vietnam was a very fast-growing economy, uh, insiders, many now it's not an insider anymore, but uh, three years ago many people said uh, Vietnam is the country to go. And this coincided with my personal preference that I like people here very much and I saw big um, uh, chances in it. And uh, that's why I decided I want to be a, a pioneer on uh, systemic work here in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, uh, as we all heard, you, you had an idea, which is to implement this, this interesting systemic constellation. I think it's the first time I really hear this, uh, this term. Also, you had a really interesting brand name, con con uh, Consult to see which is, wow, <laughs> in, and you wanted, of course, to, to protect it in, in, in Vietnam. But did you have any idea how to protect it, um, your trademark in Vietnam, before? No, I, I had zero idea. I, I was not even thinking about the need to protect it. I just had the idea in 2015, somehow over some, some weeks, and came up with that name, which coincided very well with my name and with my work. Um, and I had basically no idea to protect it all that I need to protect it. Okay. It was, it was only by, by going, I mean, I'm a member of uh, Eurochamp and German Business Association, so uh, from the presentations from IPR Health Desk here in Michigan City, I, mm -hmm. I was made aware of it. So you went to this event and you learned a lot from, from probably a panel from our IP help desk? Exactly. I mean, it, and, and it's, it was basically the, um, let's say, the, the practical connection that made me aware of it. Because I heard, I heard about that before. And, uh, and I even listened to a talk about it. And of course, you go to those events to, to meet people, to make your business known. Um, uh, and, and even when it was talked about this by IPR help desk, it sounded to me all very like, uh, yeah, lots of law, lots of uh, paperwork, and I'm not thinking that this is any any important. That was like yeah, in the mid of 2017, maybe. And then, and then, uh, end of last year, there was a combined uh, event uh, about branding, particularly branding and the important importance of branding. 
uh, for a success of a company and of a product. And that, that was combined then with a, with a presentation from, from Helpdesk. Uh, and this is when there was a, like a, a light bulb uh, switched on for me. And I said, well, uh, maybe I should uh, have a look into that. Mm -hmm. Well, makes sense. And I think once you knew from, from the IP Helpdesk that this consultancy method could be protected, also some, um, some information provided in, on your website what kind of actions did you take? Well, I mean, I, at first I contacted uh, IPR Health uh, mm -hmm. uh, there and asked for an, for an appointment. Uh, and that was very, very fast and straightforward. So, after a week, uh, I think I had, yeah, after a week, something we had an appointment. And uh, then we were discussing the topic. So, it was basically about um, the content, about the method. Uh, and about the, the name of the company, and uh, that was a very, I mean, that was very clear, and uh, um, the people from the help desk made it very, very obvious which possibilities there are to protect, uh, and uh, we discussed that, and I also saw that they, they were very well uh, prepared, so I was very happy, I was very surprised uh, that, um, that they already knew which way it probably would go. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they gave, gave very practical advice, which I basically followed them. Well, thank you very much. I think we all learned how this uh, IP help desk is helping uh, SMEs to develop themselves, in this case, in Vietnam. And I would like to ask you to stay on. We will we'll continue the session, but I will have uh, some further questions to you. Now, uh, I will start with, uh, I will introduce you, Rosella Di Cono. She's chief executive from Intrado SRL. Uh, this company promotes Italian know-how, Italian investments, and made in Italy in the Chinese market. It was established in 2002 thanks to the founder members' significant experience in the organization of exchanges of government delegations, both in Italy and China, to promote the internationalization of Italian companies and their presence in the Chinese market. They have successfully closed partnerships, merges and acquisitions, takeovers, trade strategic cooperations. I mean, this is amazing. Uh, Ms. Dicon has proven experience as a cross-cultural manager. Uh, is relevant in the many fields of environment and energy, aerospace, shipping, agri-food, high technology, fashion, real estate, logistics. Wow, I mean, many, many fields, we have to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, with, so, with all these fields, you, your, your experience, etc., what brought you to develop your business in the Chinese market? So people would ask, why China? Yeah, it's, um, I am afraid I will disillude you because uh, it's just a matter of passion when I was baby. <laughs> so I just started my business in China because of my passion for Chinese market and for Chinese culture when I was very, very young and uh, for Chinese um, the music and uh, some you know, very exciting, um, like, uh, for instance, uh, the writing, the ideograms, and so on. So mm -hmm. just for passion. Then, little by little, Chinese market uh, reached more and more importance. But at that time, it was just a matter of passion. My company decided to focus on um, on Chinese markets in the beginning. I started as a journalist mm -hmm. and then a publisher of a Chinese magazine, and then uh, as president of uh, the Jade Association, as a cultural association, and then started uh, in 2002. Actually, before I started another company in 2001, Eurasia company, and then mm -hmm. merged into Intrado. So um, uh, at the beginning, we had the chance to uh, choose uh, um, the Fujian province, which is in front of Taiwan, in the middle between Zhejiang province, mm -hmm. which is around the Shanghai area, and Guangdong province, which is around the Guangzhou, Canton area. <laughs> so in the middle is a very booming province, which is very similar to Naples, Napoli province, where I live and uh, the similar um, fields like uh, aerospace, uh, food, fashion, uh, tourism. So there's a lot of uh, you know, similar points. And uh, actually, at that time, uh, some of my um, university mates uh, went there to study, and they 
called me, they say, ah, oh, Rosella, we have to do something because Siamen and Napoli are very, very similar. So that, <laughs> that was my idea, it's a genius idea, it's a young idea. <laughs> so to, to join the two provinces, mm -hmm. the province of Naples and the province of Fujian. And happily, at that time, Xi Jinping, the actual president of the Republic, was the governor of Fujian province. So in nine, 1996, we met together mm -hmm. and we started work together for two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, from 1996 to 1998, I realized the first uh, twinship agreement between Italy and China was not such a case. It's the first case uh, in Europe. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows how to act. Uh, but uh, I was very active. I was young, so I went to the embassy in Rome to understand all these things. After that, we, we succeeded. And we started reaching high-level delegations. And then after that, Xi Jinping became uh, the vice president of the Republic. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 2010, uh, while I was already have been appointed as agent of the China International Affair for Investment Trade, a uh, high level event, the first one sponsored by Minister of Commerce uh, in China, in Xiamen, in front of Taiwan, the, the, the main city. It's not the capital city, mm -hmm. but it's uh, similar to Naples, very active city okay. in front of the sea. And that city is in front of Taiwan and uh, pushed a lot the, you know, the, the relationship among China and Taiwan, which was critical mm -hmm. at that time. So a very famous city and so very active. A mm -hmm. lot of Hua Chiao is an uh, overseas cousin, uh, similar to Hong Kong, the same way. So they acted as a, you know, um, how do you say, facilitator of the, of the foreign business. So it's very active uh, with mm -hmm. foreign market, especially with German, but uh, then thanks to me a little also with Italian companies. Thank and you. so that's why we started this business there. And mm -hmm. so I was appointed at the agent, as I was telling you, of uh, CFIT, International Affair for Investment Trades, in 1998. And in 2010, uh, that fair uh, hosted World Investment Forum from, from the United Nations. Mm -hmm. At that time, so I helped a lot. Uh, the Chinese government to organize the Italian participation there yes. because that time the Minister of Commerce dismissed those that are a critical moment. So I, so I tried to, to do my best to, to help them. And then after that, uh, I was happy that uh, Xi Jinping tagged me in public for what I've done for all these uh, years, well, asked me to go on his car, personal car. So it was very emotional for me. And so this pushed me a lot to, to go ahead. And yeah. in 2016, mm -hmm. I realized the Italy guest country of honor in Sifid uh, mm -hmm. Uh So we, uh, it's, uh, the 20, it was the 20th anniversary of the fair at that time. Mm -hmm. So uh, Italy guest country of honor was a very, very big deal. And so that time I, I contacted with, uh, with your help desk. It was that time we... Mm -hmm. Contacted together, we uh, we already knew each other. So I mean, the story is amazing. <laughs> we were yes. not expecting Xi Jinping to be in this story. <laughs> and I just met him in the in Rome, yes. in the business forum. Mm. And I also expect that uh, European Union will take actions, mm. positive actions, to to join the the Silk Road project, which is very very important. Okay, well, I mean, you mentioned many cities and regions. Because from we are China. the first country in so, Europe to yeah. reach the. Mm. The, the, to join the project mm. and to sign the agreement with China. But uh, I really uh, think, I, I'm convinced, mm -hmm. I strongly believe that uh, European Union, Union should take action to take part to this very, very huge and very, very <coughs> important project. Now, um, I mean, from our assistance, they want to know your, your experience you had in, you mentioned Xiamen in, yes. in China, because yes. uh, you, you had an event there. Yes. So, what was Several it? events for 20 years. Do you think you, you, were, you were already prepared from an IP perspective for this event? What happened there? Actually, I was prepared uh, for an speaker's perspective for my own company, but that was a, a very overall event involved mm -hmm. the Italian government. And it was very complicated because uh, I thought to register the event logo as a design, but uh, that logo was uh, made by a communication agency which worked for us, <laughs> who worked with the Italian government. So a very <laughs> difficult situation, but they gave us a suggestion. But happily, there was not enough time to make all the procedure. <laughs> so we risked a lot, but uh, I learned a lot from this experience. And yes. I will surely uh, do myself this kind of, uh, you know, preparation mm -hmm. 
And uh, I would suggest this kind of preparation to, to the small medium enterprise, which is uh, a focal point. So here you, you mentioned that you uh, contacted the help desk yes. because, uh, in regards to the protection in, in China. So how, how was this process and what is the current situation? For, because you, you mentioned, I think we were talking before, and you, you mentioned that maybe for the next year you were also... Yes, because uh, this year uh, also we will take part to that, but uh, I think next year Italy and China will celebrate the 50th anniversary mm -hmm. of their relationships. So we, we will surely make a, a, a new big event together with uh, other institutions. I hope that you will also join this, this kind of event, which is uh, what we said before, we can, we can all join to organize some events. So I think that we will take, uh, you know, uh, like we'll put this experience we had with the help desk to, to push for the, the, this kind of, uh, you know, um, how do you say, action. And mm -hmm. uh, we will register surely all the design uh, or any trademarks we want to promote in this, uh, this event. It's a uh, it's, it's focal point, not only for counterfeiter from Chinese point of view, but mm -hmm. from worldwide, because it's an international event. So it's very, very important to, to, to do this kind of thing. Well, thank you for your insights. <laughs> and we hope that you keep us updated with the, with the new events. <laughs> of course. And uh, now, here on my right, I, I want to introduce you to, um, to Guy Desault. Uh, he is uh, the managing director of Paper Means. On his right, uh, he has Moes uh, Sager. They, you can see them, they, they have these uh, really cool jackets from Paper Means. Uh, Mr. Desault studied economics in Tilburg, Holland, and, and, and he had also an MBA at INSEAD, uh, Fontainebleau. In SEAT. In SEAT. In, in SEAT. In SEAT. Perfect. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gold. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dessau started his career in Belgium in marketing and commercial jobs at Unilever and Cote d'Or Chocolate and two small family companies. With 40 years, he started his own company, Belgium's Best. Maybe you know it, maybe not. Uh, but I, I, in my case, I, I, I had some fun. <laughs> Active in this, this Belgian space, he's active in personalized Belgian chocolates and confectionery. Uh, later on, he started Paper Mints, as you, as you can see on the, <coughs> on the jackets. Uh, today, Paper Mints has three employers and 40 outsourced workers. They realized this year 1,500,000 euros, and they are expected this very year, this 2019, right, to get to 2 million. Quite impressive. And distributors from uh, paper means are established in 40 countries. Uh, they are throughout Europe, Middle East, Africa, and now they have future plans to introduce it in Canada, the USA, and Mexico. And I, I will ask now to get the, uh, yeah, the slides, so they are ready on the screen. So you have the floor. Mr. Yeah, let's be permit. You know the product? Who knows it? Can you count them? Yeah, <laughs> There's still a lot of work to do then. <laughs> so, that's peop those people anyway have fresh breath. If they smoke, if drink, after a meal. So we build up an assortment of four products, as you see them on the, on the slide, right? And then, a couple of years ago, I went to ESM. Internationale Süßware Messe in Köln. And I got almost a heart attack seeing those damn Chinese. Wow. Yes. <laughs> My brand. I called a lawyer and he needed some time and I had a better idea. I went to the office of the organization and they sent the police. And that is for free. <laughs> <laughs> I have such experience. So the understand. police went there, and the Chinese, <laughs> of course, they don't like the police. They put off the stuff. So that was one experience. This is another experience. I have some young, brilliant guys, and they look at the Google you found it, right? They just put your name on Google. No lawyer, just look on Google, what's happening? And then they found a product 
with my brand, with my mouth, my and mouth. a product that I even don't know. That is in Saudi, eh, Moose? In Saudi. That's what happens. And this, I was working in a show in Dubai, and a guy said, yes, I know your product, I sell it, it's selling very well. But I sell also the strips. I said, ah, oh. he showed me the photo. So again, this Chinese guy <laughs> that banned it <laughs> sold my mouth, my name in Dubai. Yeah. I was a bit upset, you can imagine. <laughs> so that's what happens in world. It's the same. And if you come back, you just start. When you go home, go to Google. You say, what is Paper Mint or your brand name? Is it happening? These are all our, our stuff. Then you start already here on the right. You see here already, that's not mine. That is not mine. <laughs> that was on a show that people kissed each other. That's very good. Look at this bandit. And on the right side. Oh, this is our, uh, just for the end, this is if you uh, deposit your brand in Canada, you get a nice paper. This is looking like, this is uh, which country? Canada. 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 Okay. 1,000 euro, 1,500 euro. <coughs> it's finished. Oh my God. This is... Uh, which country? Huh? This is Europe. That's fantastic. Europe. Ah. Uh, Europe is fantastic. It's Canada. It's Canada. Oh, it's Canada. Sorry. This is Latin America. We come later on it. This is paper means Europe. It's very easy just to. Okay. Uh, and this is Canada, but America. Oh, it's all blurred like Americans are. Okay. That's my. What do you want to know? <laughs> Well, as you know, I, I, we, I mean, we are amazed because you are a good example on how you can enforce your rights, not only in Europe, but also, as he mentioned, in Canada too. Like, he was in Cologne, for example, in, in Germany, in Cologne, and he could just call the police, and because he had his trademark registered, then he could enforce his rights. And also in Canada, he had a, I think we had a bad faith registration, which you could go against. In Canada, no, we wanted to go to the States. And my assistant, he looked at the website, he said they are already there. And we did a uh, research, and then we said, oh, oh that were Brazilians, mm -hmm. they cannot go to the States because mm -hmm. it's our brand. Mm -hmm. And you have to prove that you sell something in the States, otherwise you cannot deposit your brand. So we had already 10 consumers who bought via internet. Happily. Maybe $50, doesn't matter. But we said, we're selling already in the States. So the Brazilians had to get out. And that's, and, and that's how we could deposit the brand. Then we went to Mexico. We wanted to go to Mexico. Mm -hmm. We have met some Mexicans. They wanted to launch a paper mint in Mexico. So I said, a good idea. You get some dinner here. We did. And help desk analyzed in two days. Good job for free. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> and then I asked the advice to my partners in, the, in Mexico. How can I deposit my brand? But the Mexicans are doing sometimes siesta. It doesn't move. <laughs> Sorry, it, nothing happens. So now I need the next step, advice of this gentleman, <laughs> how to handle, at minimum cost, the most effective way. Perfect. I will ask uh, Katrina how much time we have left. About six minutes. Six minutes? Yeah. Perfect. Then uh, <laughs> I have one last question I would like to address to Guy, Rosela, and Torsten. If yeah. you're still there. <laughs> still Two for sleeping. each. <laughs> one <laughs> for each. So my question is, with respect to intellectual property, for future SMEs who would like to go abroad and succeed, what piece of advice would you give to them? Yep. Yes, I think that uh, direct registration would be better mm -hmm. and cheaper. For instance, in China, you need a direct registration because, uh, for instance, for um, international branding, if you do an international registration, mm -hmm. this was also confirmed by your help desk, is, is 
more expensive. And the problem is that you don't get the transliteration in Chinese characters. So if you apply to direct registration, you can avoid all these problems and save money. Mm -hmm. So first of all, for any small medium enterprise going abroad, I strongly suggest to register brand or patent or design beforehand. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they will spend much more money <laughs> afterwards. Thank you. And now, Torsten, I think you have maybe yeah. a say. <laughs> Can we hear? Yeah. 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 Do I hear you. Do you hear me? <laughs> Yes, um, we can hear you. I mean, I, I, I think it's such an exciting story about fraud here. Yeah? Um, but, um, but of course, the, the local registration trademark right, is very important. And uh, the thing in the country interest would be the first step to take. I'm also uh, um, working now on in Taiwan, uh, and um, for that I'm also to uh, help this get what's necessary to get at least a local version of the trademark. Well, thank you. Uh, yes, I will. Yeah, I will end up with uh, with the session and then. No, well, well, actually, I was, I was going to say rather than gather these good people back at the end of the training session, mm. and certainly not to leave Torsten to have to sort of loom large. I'd rather just take questions now, and then we can come to you and focus on. So, if that's okay with you, okay. Uh, I don't want to rain on your parade, and I can go off again. But I just wanted to open it up to the floor for any questions while we still have this gentleman and these good people on stage. Then we don't have so much of a va et vient. May I just start with two key things I heard from being probably the person in the room most outside this sector, and I do want to just um, comment on, I think that was interesting what Torsten <laughs> said, that he imagines that there was lots of law, I think were your words, and lots of paperwork, and he was very pleasantly surprised at the speed and how well prepared you all were. So I am <laughs> saying that because you don't often hear with the EU the word speed. So <laughs> genuinely, <laughs> and flexibly, so no, so I'm, I mean that. So I think let's just focus on that because you are PRing yourselves here and it's vital and I think that's very important. Don't forget, it is speedy. You know, it's a speedy yes. response. I think that's yes. very, very important. Yes. Um, and I think what was so brilliant about your presentation that endorsed young men with digital skills and bandits, which uh, <laughs> is certainly going to stick in everybody's head, is, is quite how easy it is for things to go wrong. So I pick up on another key message, I think, of your help desks, which is forewarned is forearmed. Just do your work. I mean, there are other avenues, you've said, ministries and this, but for goodness sake, if you can get it all from a one-stop shop, yes. it would seem very prudent to yes. go down that route, to me, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And also what was interesting, last thing, is it's very interesting, you all have very different passions why you're in different markets. So just like yes. you said, Jim, there's no stupid question, there's no wrong SME, right? This is for any mm -hmm. SME of any size or scope, really, to, to, to think about that. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if there was anything else to add or that any of you had from the floor or ha 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 oh look at this the anonymous yes I'm not surprised it was anonymous on Slido will we get a free sample of paper mints <laughs> not if you're online no Probably he's not going to send it by one of his <laughs> bandits who's selling it in another country <laughs> if you're here well I would imagine I brought samples of course you did okay <laughs> and I'm looking for a distributor in Sweden okay okay <laughs> okay <laughs> Any, any other comments apart from questions? Anything that the help desks needed to step in or anybody else who's had an experience of an SME that they want to share at this juncture? Or you're all, you're all good. <laughs> Anything good people because you've taken the time and the trouble to join us and you who've had the hardest job ever, sir, Torsten, having to look very beatific <laughs> behind <laughs> us and certainly not bored, so I'm really impressed. I'm I'm like, everyone is watching me. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I've never seen this at an event. Extraordinary, but you have such a lovely face. It, it worked. Um, anything from you, Robert? Or, yes. yes. Well, that you wanted to. No, you are the main actor today. 
<laughs> after you. So for the speed, I can witness. It's really very good, the service. Uh, personally, I've been uh, studying the IP rights for a long time and took part to several webinars, even from uh, your side. It was very, very good to understand, to go in deep to many cases and right. to think about what to do. So it's, you know, it's kind of benchmark or with other people okay. and other f different fields. And so I think it's, uh, it's very useful. Mm -hmm. And so also the speed from your side is, um, is quite good because uh, there's, there's a quick response and there's a chance also to talk by phone, not only to send emails. So if you want to make further questions, you can. So it's very good, good service, okay. but it cannot stand alone. Sure. Uh, must be combined with a deepened study of, uh, of, of, the field. Of, the, of the field. Because I yeah. would, frankly speaking, if I, I didn't have a long experience in IP rights, I would not be able to, to raise any question okay. to you. Okay. This is first point. Second point for the, for the markets, uh, East Asia, Vietnam, uh, China, I can witness that it's very, very hard. And the third one, uh, regarding the involving of the Minister of Commerce uh, in some, uh, some issues, uh, yes, uh, uh, it can be helpful because from Italian point of view, for instance, Minister of Commerce also in Italy support yeah. the, the local IPR desk, so yeah. it's very important. But I think till now it has been limited to such very, you know, strong cases, yeah, frankly yeah, speaking. Yeah, 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 so sure, that's why sure. your, your support in, 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 in this, you know, uh, small, medium enterprise cases would be really, really, really okay. mandatory. But thank you. I mean, for me, I don't know if you share this, that's a valuable um, point to make <coughs> because you said that the IPR help desks also have their place within the SME, th those who are yes. fronting an SME, not expecting yes. everything, because it's also a balance of expectations. So there's got to be that. And I think we heard that earlier when, sorry, I've, I've rudely forgotten this lovely lady in red's oh, name. Ma yeah, Marta, thank you, beg your pardon. When you said it's about a relationship, mm -hmm. well, that sounds like it's part of that whole collaborative effort. Maybe if I can make a, pro a concrete proposal, I would suggest to settle a forum, uh, because you have the uh, frequently asked, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, frequently asked yeah. answers and questions, but fuck, but it's not enough because you have to search, search. Right. But if you input on the platform, <laughs> okay, the, the, so it's more interactive. Yeah, it's more yeah. interactive. Okay. You, know, you just launch and you say, ah, is there anybody can talk about this kind of case and exchange views? That okay. would be very helpful. Okay. All right. And this must be from institutional sides, not from private sides. Did you agree with that or you were waving to add something? This must be, you know, D this just, notion just that involved. Up because this is what was interesting, what you said just before, uh, because you, di you had to dive, had to dive into the, yes. uh, the law of everything. Yes. I, I was completely blank. I did anything. <laughs> <laughs> And I, 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 I okay. caught this. Later, uh, I had my trademark in my hand, so it was really amazing. Okay, well, there's a thought for you, Daniel. I know that the EU is always in listening mode, so I hope you've scribbled. You are literally <laughs> like the voice and finger of God. You were like the finger of God <laughs> pointing here at this lovely lady. <laughs> Robert, I have stolen your thunder a little bit, but you have done the bulk of the work. But I'm going to close this session, if I may, to allow us to have good time for the trainers, because that's moving on to a whole other piece of the puzzle that I need to mm -hmm. deliver to these people before lunch. So I leave you to make some last yes. words. Yes, I would like to add that, as, uh, as we saw from Paper Mints, you can, you can enforce your rights worldwide. So it shows us that the intellectual property is a real business tool. Yeah. And yeah. it is also, it's not only for big companies, but we, as we can see, it's also thought for a small and medium businesses that want to go to China, to Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. or to Latin America. And I would like to have that in, in people's yeah, to take people that away. minds. Yeah. yeah, it's all shapes and sizes. Mm. Yeah. And thank you very much. Thank you. Can you give them a very warm round of applause?
Thank you for your most charming moderation. Thank you for your most entertaining and erudite uh, interventions, you, ladies and gentlemen of the SMEs. You, the so you are now released from having to stare at us from the screen, sir, and you are released to go and decide how many samples you're going to give out to that very greedy person on uh, Slido. So voila, you may leave the stage because I'm going to introduce some ladies in just a moment. So thank you, you can give them another warm round of applause.